my public school experience was very different than than most and mm. because i was born in england raised in brazil and montreal oh, and and so i i had school in in brazil from monday to saturday from 7 a.m to 11 a.m mm. and because it was too hot to go to school oh, yeah, to go to yeah. a building after 11 a.m you would so after 11 a.m you're done you're mm -hmm. out you're you know you're at the beach you're with your friends you're doing whatever so it and everybody was up in the morning because it was so hot so from 7 till 11 monday through mm -hmm. saturday and that's how they got everything in but even then it was a lot like we had people do uh scraping animal skins oh, we yeah. had okay. like so many different experiences mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. there and I lived both in the hills and in Rio de Janeiro, uh, mm. close to the, the ocean. So lots of different experiences there. But then in, in Montreal, that was very different too, because the FLQ, which it was a group of people trying to force Canadians who lived in Quebec to all choose French and be uh, their own country. It okay. was the separatists. Yep. Okay. Right. So it, it's like the, IRA in, oh, okay. in, you know, if you think that way. So we had bombs being planted in the schools. Oh, wow. We had, we had these terrorists going, riding motorcycles through the schools hmm. to, just to disturb English schools. Wow. So it was horrifying. And then I went to boarding school in England, hmm. which was a totally different, yeah. you know, experience. <laughs> Because I was only eight years old when I went to oh, boarding wow. school in England. So I was 4,000 miles away from my family. Mm -hmm. And and then, you know, I remember doing flashcards. I, but what I remember most is not what I learned from those classes. Right, right. <laughs> but from, you know, the experience of being on uh, in the area. So my experience, and, and my grandfather was a scientist, so he never forced me to go anywhere hmm. where whenever we moved it was convenient for them to have me in school it was still a daycare kind of thing right hmm. after a brief interruption the independence factor that came mm -hmm. from that was huge yeah, and yeah. it's in in europe it's very normal to send your kids away at eight right to boarding right. school yeah. so i was in an international boarding school that had kids from all over nice and it's it's not done here really it's right, not right. the yeah <laughs> yeah it's it's, it's but, only a rare you know there there are a bunch of boarding schools on the east coast uh, of the US but yeah it's not it's not really a common thing yeah. for sure yeah um, actually we have a an elite private school in our in Oregon here not too far away i haven't in, yeah. investigated them very thoroughly but uh, but yeah it's interesting you know the diversity of experiences really is right uh, quite interesting and, my grandfather being the scientist that he was, he always taught me, if you don't find what you want, make it. Mm, mm -hmm. So that was, you know, it was never, oh, I can't do this. Oh, okay, I'll give up. Right, right. <laughs> and, you know, so I was always embedded with that critical thinking. Okay, if I can't, if somebody else hasn't done it, how do I do it? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How do I find who can do it? Right. And that's one of the things that I try to pass on to the kids that I'm affiliated with is because you know, don't give up. We mm -hmm. often, we watch masterclass and mm -hmm. like masterclass.com and Richard Branson is on there saying, I would never hire somebody because they had a degree. Mm -hmm. I don't have a degree. I quit school at 15. Right. You know, right. I, I was in a high school band that no ever, we did, couldn't find somebody to sign us. So mm -hmm. I created a music label. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. you know, hit an obstacle overcome it yeah yeah and and that gets at the you know the the title of the whole series here is agentic schools is really emphasizing yeah. that agency and 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 it's amazing how many different ways people have found to do that yeah. you know and 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 you know doing it as a a facilitator of homeschooling through a private school is like okay that's how it's done there <laughs> you know yeah. and yeah, it, exactly. it has so many different variations it's amazing but it, but i you know throughout everything you've said it's really clear that that sort of that that comes through really clear 
is you know facilitating ensuring the kids are empowered to do things mm -hmm. um, but then also okay what support do they need what what kind of accountability do they do the parents need or the or the grandmother you know picking up on her math skills or or whatever it is yeah but really it it the underlying core of it is that agency that ability to mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. tune in to Be what it is you're up to and do it This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.